People ask me everywhere, what do you think about Occupy Wall Street? LayfieldReport.com, we have all this news and all your news in one place. But to understand this movement, it's important to look at a couple of other movements of people that were fed up. Muhammad Bouazizi, a fruit vendor known as Bez Busa in Tunisia, had had it. The morning of December 19, 2010, police come by and steal fruit from him, as they did almost every day. He objected. The male police officers held him down while the female police officers slapped him. He was fed up. He goes downtown and he sets himself on fire. And he later dies of the wounds from this self-immolation. But what he set in place is still alive, the Arab Spring. I don't think anybody would have believed that within a year, Gaddafi would be dead. President Ali of Tunisia would be out. Mubarak would be out. Yemen would devolve into civil war. Syria would have an uprising. And the uprising called the Arab Spring is still very much alive. On January 24, 2009, the first Tea Party to protest the obesity tax by Governor Patterson in New York set the stage for Rick Santelli's rant on February 19th, less than a month later, on the Chicago Mercantile floor where he called for a Tea Party uprising. Within hours, Tea Party websites sprung up all over the web, and within a year and a half, the world's largest economy was brought to the edge of default by this Tea Party that at one time was vilified as radicals and racist. Occupy Wall Street is now vilified by some as hippies and druggies, but they're embraced by some because they're realizing this movement may grow, just like a Tunisian fruit vendor calls the Arab Spring. What will happen? They have no organization. They have no set agenda. And when winter comes, if they don't have an organization agenda, they will probably dissipate and go away. They are ripe for somebody within their own ranks, not someone from the unions, not someone from the Democratic Party, and not someone from the Republican Party, to rise up and lead this group. The problem that politicians have that are trying to embrace it now, you better watch out because they're going to realize they're not dumb people. In fact, they're pretty smart people. They're going to realize that Wall Street is not any greedier or any smarter than they were 20 years ago. It's just the system has changed to favor the rich. Low interest rates, the poor can't get credit, so the rich get to refinance. Banks getting bailed out, automakers getting bailed out. These guys don't, the small guys don't get bailed out. The big guys do. The corporate tax rate, the big guys don't pay that. That's why we have to have the highest corporate tax rate in the world because only the small and medium-sized businesses pay it because the big guys have lobbyists. And they get loophole on top of loophole to move their money overseas. That's why the tax code right now is 72,000 pages plus. The system is stacked against the lower and the middle class. It's stacked in favor because of lobbyists and politicians who have given in to them for years. And if this group figures that out, we could have our own Arab Spring. If there's no organization, they could dissipate by winter. But it's too early to tell. As with any movement, you never know where it's going to be headed. And for politicians who try to embrace them now, watch out, because they may see through you. LayfieldReport.com, you can get all your news.